Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack, where science meets investments. I'm your host, Raj. Friends, uh, as a retail investor, I try to do my own research on various companies, their therapies, and there is a way of thinking I adopt. And in this channel, I'm sharing it with you uh, with the hope that if you find anything wrong in there, you could share your ideas. If you have a contrary opinion, you could share your ideas in the comment section. It helps me as well as the retail investor community that we are building. By no means am I an expert on these topics. So uh, with that said, I would like to say that today we are going to explore CRISPR Therapeutics' newest move, its partnership with Sirius Therapeutics to co-develop SRSD107, which is a long-acting siRNA therapy that targets factor 11 to prevent blood clots. In this video, we'll break down how SRSD107 works, where it fits in today's clinical landscape, in terms of current standard of care and how the partnership uh, could reshape CRISPR Therapeutics business model beyond gene editing. We'll also look at the market size, the current standard of care and the potential for cost savings and improved safety. That said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Let us look at the standard of care today. Let's first look at what SRSD107 is trying to replace or improve upon. The standard treatment for venous thromboembolism, uh, which includes deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, is anticoagulation therapy. The first line of drugs today are DOACs, uh, direct oral anticoagulants, like apixaban uh, or uh, rivaroxaban or enoxaban. And um, these have largely replaced therapies like warfarin and low molecular weight heparin due to fewer side effects and no need for constant lab monitoring. Three to six months is the typical duration of treatment for most, uh, most patients. It's extended or in indefinite therapy for high risk cases. But here is the challenge. Major bleeding remains a serious risk. Recurrent clots still happen, especially when therapy is stopped. Long-term complications like post-thrombotic syndrome and chronic thromboembolic uh, pulmonary hypertension or CTEPH add massive burden and costs. It's estimated that uh, for each patient, year one would be around $12,000 to $15,000 and the lifetime cost would be around $18,000 to uh, $23,000 and above. Major bleeding events can cost up to $22,800 in case the treatment is interrupted and the major bleeding event occurs. CTEPH complications can lead up to $5,500 uh, per month in some cases. These numbers highlight a large market, not just in terms of patient need, but also cost efficacy. That's, that's where I think SRSD107 steps in. Now, uh, the other thing I always like to do when I look at the therapy is to check out how it works. So SRSD107 is a long-acting small interfering RNA uh, therapy or siRNA therapy. It works by silencing factor 11, a plotting protein involved in coagulation cascade. And the advantage is that FXI inhibition or uh, uh, factor 11 inhibition reduces clot risk but causes le less bleedings compared to uh, other anticoagulant. We have the phase one results with us uh, for this therapy. Over 93% reduction in FXI activity was noticed and more than uh, 2x increase in activated partial thromboplastin time or APTT. It has also got uh, favorable safety and tolerability. The potential dosing interval is up to six months. And this profile is particularly attractive for patients who have high bleeding risk, need predictable infrequent dosing, may struggle with adherence to daily oral meds. And the upcoming phase two trial will test SRSB107 in patients undergoing total knee arthroplasty, a controlled setting to validate bleeding prevention and dose optimization. CRISPR Therapeutics has structured this uh, as a, both a strategic investment and core development deal. And it involves payment of 25 million cash upfront by CRISPR Therapeutics and $70 million uh, worth of equity investment in Sirius. And the cost sharing for the therapy is 50-50 cost and 50-50 profit. CRISPR Therapeutics will commercialize the, uh, the therapy in US once approved and Sirius will uh, commercialize it in Greater China. CRISPR also gets rights to nominate two additional siRNA programs, 
Uh, this is a true modality expansion for CRISPR, which until now has focused uh, entirely on permanent gene edits. With S uh, SRSV107, CRISPR gains a reversible gene suppression tool, making it more flexible and competitive in disease areas where permanent edits post safety risks. Now let's uh, place SRSD107 in context. CRISPR's lead product, CASJV, is already FDA approved for sickle cell disease and TDT, with commercial rollout on the way for that therapy. Other promising therapies include CTX112 for lymphoma and autoimmune conditions, and that is in phase 1 slash 2 of clinical trial. We did a video on CTX310 for cardiovascular disease. It's in early phase 1 trial. SRSV107 is currently in phase two, meaning it's not likely to reach FDA approval ahead of other programs, but if uh, it diversifies CRISPR's risk profile and adds long-term optionality in cardiovascular and hematologic indications. Importantly, SRSV107 could tap into a huge patient population that requires long-term anticoagulation. Millions of people worldwide many of whom are poorly served by current treatments due to bleeding risks or compl compliance issues will uh, benefit. From an investor perspective, here is what makes SRSV107 compelling. The first one is a large addressable market. VT affects over 1 million people annually in the US alone. And the high cost burden is uh, another factor. Any product raising bleeding risk or dosing frequency can save payers and hospitals money. The other aspect you can look at is platform diversification because CRISPR is no longer just a gene editing company. It's now into SIRNA business as well. And then this provides multiple monetization paths, US and China market split, two more potential SIRNA targets, equity upside from Sirius is also there. So if successful, SRHB107 could compete directly with top selling DOACs like Eliquis and Zarelto, uh, which collectively bring in over 20 billion annually in terms of uh, global revenue. Well, friends, now I'd like to ask you a question. Just imagine you are a patient, okay? I'm not wishing anything bad for you. Just imagine if you were a patient. Would you switch from a daily pill to a six-month injection if it meant fewer bleeding risks and better protection from clots? Let me know in the comments. I think uh, the answer that you have for that will give you an indication of the revenue potential for CRISPR therapeutics. Well, friends, uh, I hope this video gave you some insight into this new collaboration from CRISPR Therapeutics and how it would add to the value of CRISPR Therapeutics as a stock. So with that said, I would like to request that in case you have not subscribed, please subscribe and help grow the channel. And if you like this video, please do not hesitate to press a like out there because it helps this video go to more people like yourself who may appreciate this video. And of course, it helps the channel. Friends, that brings me to an end of this video. Bye for now.